4 before 39990 2022 Explore XLT four wheel drive 51245 2022 F150 4 before Super Crew 62240 Local you trust performance you can afford Rayvarner Ford your East Tennessee Ford dealership I75 exit 122 or shops online at rayvarnerford.com Welcome to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. And folks, we're honored that the Free Medical Clinic sponsors our Friday Night Scoreboard show. And the Free Medical Clinic has three locations, Oak Ridge, Harriman, and Bryceville. And they offer telehealth, too. Go to fmcor.org for more info. And if you don't have insurance, FMC is here for you. Go to fmcor.org for more info. They'll help you out, folks. They do about uh, $4.2 million of free medical care. And if you need that, go to fmcor.org and uh, tell them you heard it right here on Channel 12 on Friday night. Uh, okay, we're in week six. Uh, still some games pending. And the game I'm talking about is up the road a little bit from where we're at. It's at Anderson County. The last score I heard was 21 to 14. So I'm waiting on to see if there's any finals there. Uh, and that's with Elizabethan. I don't know, I've not seen the final or been given the final score for Clinton yet. And Clinton was playing Chattanooga, a team out of Chattanooga. I think they're called the Purple Pounders or some crazy name like that. But uh, that's, a weird, that's a weird nickname, Purple Pounders. Come to invade Dragonland tonight. I was told that Clinton was up about 30 something to nothing, but I don't know if that's, that's been a few minutes ago. So. I think Oak Ridge was off tonight. Uh, do know one final, you know, man, Greenville. Wow, just a machine up there in Upper East Tennessee. Go to Kingsport Dobbins Bennett tonight. Undefeated Kingsport Dobbins Bennett. Come away with the win, 21 to nothing. So Greenville is back. They're for real, and that's a foe we'll talk. Then when Cox gets here, me and him will talk about it, depending on the score of Anderson County and Elizabeth and not what happens there. Uh, the Campbell County and Car uh, I believe it's Carnes tonight. That score's been back and forth. The last I heard from our guys was that Campbell County was up. I've not heard anything since. So as we get some finals rolling in here, we'll talk about, I do know Rockwood beat Harriman tonight to win one of the longest rivalries in the state, or it is the longest rivalry in the state of Tennessee, to win that score tonight. Uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little later on too. I think Coalfield is, is getting beat tonight. I don't know the final of that, but we will get that. We'll have all the finals here in just a little bit. About 11.30ish, we'll talk a little Tennessee football. A huge game for Tennessee. And, I, you know, I'm wearing a shirt. It's got a T on you know, This Tennessee garb here. They lose tonight. You won't see me with it for the rest of the six or seven weeks that we're going to be here. I won't wear it no more because, you know, this is a typical Tennessee team, in my opinion. They're sitting at 3-0, and Florida coming in, and all the hype. Game days in Knoxville, all the hype tomorrow, sold out, checkerboard seat. They're going to checkerboard it and all the hype. And if Tennessee does like they usually do, they'll lay, they'll lay a big egg tomorrow and get beat. I hope not. I've picked them to win. I think they'll win by about 10. But we'll talk about that a little later on when we get over in college football tonight when uh, Cox gets here with me and, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little Tennessee football. Uh, and... Uh, but a, another big score from last night, and at first I wasn't real impressed with uh, Knoxville West. That's all I've heard for the last five weeks is 
how good Knoxville West is, how they're the dominant 5A team around here in this area. And, you know, I watched the whole ball game last night uh, through the, the whole thing, and I'll tell you what, they really impressed me in, in the third and fourth quarter with some things they'd done, and there's a lot of 5A teams that's got a lot of hopes this year. Man. I think the 5A state championship goes through Knox West this year. They take out Coyle down last night, 29-26. Uh, Y'all can say what you want to about it. That's Alcoa. That's a team that usually the only loss they have every year is either to Maryville or to nobody. So I, I think that's a huge win for Knoxville West last night. I think that proves a big point. I think Knoxville West is the team to beat in this area for the five, for 5A, and I think the 5A championship will run through uh, Knoxville West uh, this year. That's me. Now, everybody is – the hype's been – this is Anderson County's year. Elizabeth is down. Anderson County didn't – and I watched a little bit of it tonight on TV on Channel 95. And I watched some of it. Something was off with Anderson County tonight. I don't know what was off. Uh, you know, I'm wait. Maybe they come back and won. I hope they did. But something was off tonight with Anderson County. I, I, you know, Elizabeth had a big football team. Man, their defensive line and offensive line was big. I wouldn't. I'm not too impressed with them, but they were big. And but Anderson County just looked. They looked off tonight. I, I, to put a, my finger on it and tell you, this was it. Offense didn't look right. Defense didn't look real bad, but the offense is what I thought was off tonight. They they just wasn't like, you know, they just, something was off. Uh, you know, maybe not this, maybe later on in this coming up week, somebody will, from up there will tell somebody and we'll know next Friday night what the deal was. But something was off with AC tonight. Like I said, we're still waiting on a final. But if somebody does know the final, wish I'd, if they've been there, call us and let us know. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Coach, he says it's 28. 28-28. We're told it's tied up 28-28. So, uh, Anderson County's come back to tie that thing up, and we'll see what happens. I would say we might might be or could be heading to overtime. So, we'll see. That's that's great because, like I say, Anderson County, I'm not putting words in Coach Gillum's mouth, and I don't know exactly what he would say if we talked to him on the phone right now. I would think he would say the first two quarters or maybe the first three quarters, Anderson County didn't play like Anderson County's played the previous uh five games they played uh, so we'll see uh, t tonight as this rolls on what what actually goes on and what happens it'll be interesting to see what the the final comes out of that but for everybody to say Elizabethan's down this year and this is the year that AC should get Elizabethan and that should be a hurdle that's knocked out of the way man but the hurdle standing there in front of them again it looks like it's going to be Greenville and I think that game's if I heard correctly today that game's at Anderson County Okay, now, <clears throat> I think Oliver, hey, did Oliver Springs win? Uh, uh, it just says, uh, we don't find a yet, but it's 33 to 6, so it looks like they will. Okay, looks like Oliver Springs is going to win their second game in a row tonight. Now, listen, uh, the mayor of Oliver Springs, uh, my brother was there the other day, and he sent a message through my brother to me. He said he didn't feel like that we're giving Oliver Springs enough love. Me, specifically. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, you know, I'm all about Oliver Springs. I always have been. I used to go set with, uh, back then he was just a councilman, I think. I'd go out at halftime when we were doing the TV games while we were at halftime, and I'd sit with him during halftime and talk to him. I really like the mayor of OS. He's a good guy. He does a, he does a, great, he does a great job down there, but... My hat's off to uh, Oliver Springs if they picked up their second win tonight, and that's what it looks like. Congratulations to Oliver Springs. I know that that makes that town and city down there a better place to be and live and go to school and all that, and congratulations. And, Mayor, I hope if they did get their second win tonight that you're happy, and, man, I hope I've made up for it tonight. But all the love to Oliver Springs tonight down that way to Oliver Springs tonight. So uh, I hope, uh, you know, they got a new head football coach. Uh, he's – he. It was a little rough on him on the first three or four weeks there, and, you know, they've turned it around a little bit. So uh, good to see if Oliver Springs has picked their second win up tonight. You know, maybe they've got it turned around just at the right time, just before playoffs. And they're still in the playoff picture probably, but we'll see. But congratulations goes out to Oliver Springs again. 
And Mayor, hope you're satisfied. I got to meet a lady today, Cox. I met this lady today at Hoskins Drugstore. Okay? Okay. I met Donna Fingers and Greg. Uh, Greg's her guy there, and they're big fans, and they watch us every Friday night. And uh, they uh, they want to talk about, you know, she was telling me that she watches the show every Friday night. And uh, Where's she from? She's from Clinton. I assume she's from Clinton. She works right there at Hoskins. I didn't really ask her where she was she from. She's from Harriman or Rockwood. No, she's not from Harriman or Rockwood. She's Clinton. She's from up. She's in, she lives in Clinton somewhere. In classification. Yeah, in classification and all that. But anyway, she a uh, big fan and uh, nice to meet her today. And I'll be back in there again. And maybe she'll be there and we'll get to talk in. I'll get a little bit more inf info out of her. But uh, hope you and Greg are watching tonight, Donna. And uh, uh, shout out to you and all the girl. you know, all the. All the people there at Hoskins today was, you know, went in and had me a little hamburger. It's pretty good. So uh, all the girls there at Hoskins that uh, took care of us today, and it's it really good to to uh, to meet Donna and, and hear about uh, uh, Greg here that uh, they watch us on Friday night and just glad. And I, you didn't, you might have heard me talking about the mayor of Oliver Springs. Steve was down there, and you know who Steve is, my brother, and he was down there, and the mayor said, you need to tell your brother he's not giving Oliver Springs enough love. Uh oh so I had to give them a little love down in Oliver Springs tonight. So they a little love. Not, they? Yeah, they were up. It wasn't fine. We don't know if it's final. They were up 33 and none. But a little love shouted out down towards Oliver Springs tonight. And, Mayor, uh, congratulations on that big second win there for the Oliver Springs Bobcats. But last score we heard, Anderson County was tied 28-28. That's what I'm getting right now, too. Uh, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to be honest, okay? I watched it. Can't, Davey Gillum couldn't. And like I said, I wouldn't put words in his mouth for nothing. But he cannot be happy with the way his team played. There's something, there was something wrong, there's something off tonight with Ernst County. I don't know if they were trying too hard. I don't know if it was nerves. I don't they beat know. Him if, last year in the I, regular season. I, I, yeah, I don't know if it was because Gavin knows back tonight. They were afraid that he might get hurt and they might somebody might carry the responsibility he of that. He didn't play offense, did he? He played. He was out there a couple times. Uh, I heard he wasn't playing offense. Well, I thought he was out there. He didn't carry the. I didn't see him carry the ball, but I thought he was out there. He played defensive. Spare, he was on the defense. He's a defense. I guess they call him a defensive end. That's the position it looks like he's playing to me. I don't know what it was, but the first couple quarters and third quarter, Ash County on I, the defense didn't play bad, but offensively, you know, one or two things. Ash County was off tonight, or Elizabeth is better than what. They're getting credit for. I'll uh, say that. 28-28 uh, with 19.2 seconds left. Elizabeth has the ball on the 20. 11.7 seconds left. They kick or go for it. That's the question. Timeout at Anderson County Field. 11.7 seconds to go. Ball's on the 20. So if Elizabeth has a kicker. So they're kicking, what, a 37-yard field, field goal? 37-yard field goal. About a 37-yard field goal? But he went for it earlier from the 26. He did go for it earlier from the 26. Well, uh, why would you go, if you just got 11 points some seconds, why don't you just kick, try to kick, the, if you've got a field goal kicker, um, give him a shot I would say. and go to, and play for overtime. I mean, at this point, you're, you're not going to get the ball back to, to, to do anything, not unless you got a, a home run play. I, I, here's what I'll go back and say. Well, we'll so, let's talk about AC and Elizabeth later. Okay. We'll, we'll, see we'll what, wait to see what score yeah, is. Yeah, we'll wait to see what score if is. If they come back, you know, so they just had a bad night. Uh, I think it's what you mark it up as. But they didn't look good. They didn't look – They. I'm just telling you, I'm not I'm not dogging them. They did. They just did not – I believe Coach Gillum would say the first two quarters, they just did – something was not right. I don't know what they might say. Nothing was wrong. But they sure didn't look what I've seen in the past. Yeah. Against the other opponents that I've seen them on TV against. They look completely different tonight for some reason. If you're an Anderson County fan, do you walk out of this game happy or upset, even though if you win or lose? I'm going to tell you what, win or lose. I walked out concerned. I'm, I'm, well, let me tell you why I'm concerned. I'm concerned because a team that's a future opponent down the road ways goes to Kingsport Dobbins Bennett tonight, I think, and beats Kingsport Dobbins Bennett 21 to 20. That concerns me more tonight than what's on the football field because that is a team that Anderson County has had trouble with. That is a big red flag, and that's a concern right there. You, Right there, that's a concern to me. Eddie Spradlin's feeling good. Yeah. If, if he sees Anderson County, if he sees Elizabeth and go down and play Anderson County this close, he's got to feel pretty good about it. They went for Anderson County, intercepted it. 
Must going to have, overtime. Must not have a field goal kicker. Must not have a kicker. Okay, so we'll talk about it a little bit. Hey. We have a call? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do, don't we? I'm sorry. sorry. Man, I didn't even see it blinking. We got to talk as much, and I got hopped up there. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Hey, this is Lady Buck. Okay. This is Lady Buck. I need to apologize for last week. Apologize for. You just give us your opinion like everybody else that calls in here. And that's all. Uh, they're, 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 uh, time out. No apology needed, okay? Okay. Well, the next thing I want to say is I think both of you guys are awesome. And the way you support and get up here and talk about our team, nobody can do it better. Well, oh, thank you for that. We, thank th th <laughs> yeah, there's probably somebody that can do it better. Uh, we, but we appreciate you saying that. But you always know, so we try to do the best we can. And we just understand about this other stuff. Some people don't understand it, and that's okay. It's your opinion, and you're entitled to your opinion, just like me and Cox are entitled to theirs. And, and we always don't agree on everything, and that's okay, too. That's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to disagree, and at the end of the day, it, it's all right with everybody. Well, you know, so we're we're good. We're good. You're good. Uh, well, I just I just want you to know that I respect y'all. Love what you're doing. Love how you support our kids. And I've got a ton of friends every Friday night that just want to listen, to hear what you guys are saying, and you do a great job. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Call us back anytime, okay? Oh, you know I will. Thank you. Ladybug didn't agree with us last week, Cox. She was a little adamant about it, and that's okay. Everybody's got their opinion, and it's okay. You're pretty adamant about Peyton Manning. Yeah, I'm pretty adamant. I don't like him. Who's the guest picker, by the way, tomorrow on Game Day? I, uh, it, it should be T. Martin. I heard it was... It's a WWE wrestler. Yeah, I heard it was a WWE oh, oh, oh. The, the mayor of Knoxville? Is it? No. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Austin Whoa, East girl. Austin, the Phillips girl. Yeah, the Phil yeah, Austin East girl. Yeah, the Austin East girl uh, that's on Jeff WWE. Jeff Phillips' sister. Yeah, yeah, Austin East girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I figured it'd be Morgan Wallen. Yeah. Yeah, she was a track and field star. Yeah. Go ahead, Joni, here. Uh, Anderson County just intercepted a pass in the end zone, so this game's going into overtime. Okay. Hey, keep us up on that game, okay? I will, uh, Kingston in a real battle with uh, Campbell County. Kingston's going to win that game. I think there's just a few seconds left. And it's 41 to 40, Kingston. That's been a back and forth game all night long. Hey, let me ask you a question. I've got people texting me because they're watching the show. How does high school overtime work? Is that first and 10 from the 10? I think you're right on that. I'm not positive either, but I think you're right. Ten. First and goal from the ten. First and goal from the ten. Do you have to start going for two at some point? At some point you do too. Maybe the third overtime. Okay. I think maybe somebody knows. Can yeah, maybe uh, our referee's watching like he was last week. Hey, keep us up to date on the score. You don't know the Clinton score by any chance, do you? I uh, know, but I'll get it. Uh, I was just going to comment on Oliver Springs a little bit. Uh, they're a very young team this year. Got a lot of fresh sophomore playing. Yeah. And uh, it looks good for them in the future, and, and they've got a chance to uh, to win the rest of their games except maybe Coalfield. Uh, so they're looking pretty good right now. Yeah, that's what, that's what we, were th we were thinking. We thought after last week's win that Auburn Springs had a chance maybe to go to the playoffs if they just went out. There's a possibility. They're still in the, they're still in the talk right now. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, call us back. Thank you, caller. All right. Uh, so yeah, the girl, WWE girl, uh, whatever, I can't remember her name, my granddaughter's, my granddaughter that runs track. I know her. Her dad's got something to do a little bit with the track program that she participates in, and he brought her belt, and my granddaughter had her picture uh, taken with the, the championship belt. I bet Adeline, I bet my granddaughter don't know that. I'll have to call here at our first break and... Tell them to tell her that she'll be on W. She'll be on there tomorrow on the calling on the ESPN show there tomorrow. Knoxville. Well, I told people we'd talk about 11:30 about college football. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hey, you know, I've, I've listened to you and Jesse and 
Everybody else talked the last two or three weeks or last five weeks how good Wes was. Yep. Okay? And I watched that game last night, and I, I, in the first two quarters, I didn't see it. I, I, I just didn't see Wes. I just didn't see West that good. The first two quarters, okay? Then the third and fourth quarters, I'm convinced that the 5A state championship goes through Knoxville West this year. I agree. Okay, I think the third and fourth quarter, they were by far the better team on the football field. I, I, they really impressed me offensively, defensively. On some of the things, uh, I'm told it's going into overtime. 28, 28. Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, I don't. Well, I'll, I'll make a call here in a second. Uh, but anyway, what 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 was your take on the, on that win last night for West over Alcor? You know, usually Alcor only loses to one team, and that team is Maribel. But last night they lost to West. Did I read where no one has beat Alcoa and Maribel? Both in the same season since 1999. Might be true, and there's a talk. Maryville has not lost to anybody other than Alcoa since they got beat by Morristown West or East West. And West plays Maryville later on in the year, so that could come up as a conversation piece too. Anderson County scored. Okay, they, they had overtime. the ball. Okay, they had the ball first, so. Elizabeth will get the ball and get a chance to go for it next. So, the other thing I heard was is Alcoa has not beat, been beat by a Knox County team since 2013, and that was Fulton at. Was that at Alcoa? At Alcoa. I think it was Alcoa. I might be wrong. No, they've been beat. 2013 wasn't Fulton. It wasn't Fulton. 2007 was Fulton. Okay. At Alcoa. At Alcoa. Yeah. Thought, 2013, it, no. It because 2012 and 13 is when Rankin was supposed to play Fulton and didn't play him. Didn't play. Right. Yes. Well, I thought it was a really good high school football game. It was probably one of, the, one of the better games that I've got to watch this Elizabeth year. Elizabeth scored. Elizabeth scored. I, if I'm Elizabeth, the coach has already done it once. I go for two. Two. I, put, I just put it out here. I said, I, I didn't come down here to do all this crap. I come down here to he's, win this He's won game. state championships. Yo, he's, what's he got? Well, he has nothing to lose. Bam, bam. See them later on in the year, play them again. Go for it, baby. Go yeah. for it. Have some guts and go for I, it. I don't think Elizabeth. Here's, here's call. Let's get it right quick. Quick caller, you're on the air. 35 34. 35 34, and uh, Elizabeth then is deciding whether to go for two or not. Okay. Give us a call back, Ed. See you, bud. I see you, man. That guy right there, man, he's a reliable guy, okay? What else does it say? Bianca Belair, Lauren said is the girl's name. That's the wrestler. She's going to be on ESPN. She's going to be the guest picker tomorrow, Lauren. Tell Adeline that. Uh, that she'll be on ESPN tomorrow morning on the, on the uh, college kickoff show there at uh, Knoxville tomorrow. So I don't if he's called anymore. timeout, he's going for two. You think he is? What's he have to lose? He doesn't have nothing to lose. Not, well, yeah, as he said, the game back there. Yeah, but I mean, he but still has see, nothing to lose. That's though. the thing. I think that's where Elizabeth and Greenville are in their programs. I, I don't think, I don't think regular season losses define them. I don't think the regular season defines a good year from a bad year with Elizabeth and Greenville. With Elizabeth, either one of them. I think at the end of the day, what defines them is who's playing in Cookville or Chattanooga now. I was going to see if I could find that picture of that boat. I wonder why this wasn't the OEB game of the week. Who was the OEB game of the week? Rockwood and Harriman. Rockwood, Rockwood and Harriman. Stays longest rivalry. Stays gotcha. yep. It's pretty much always, isn't it? Yeah, it pretty much yeah. is. If you I get understand them. that. Yep. Bearden football tonight. That was... Uh, a much improved Bearden team. Oh, yeah, Clinton won their game 51-21. Okay, Clinton won 51-21. I'm excited to see Bearden and Anderson County play later in the year. That's going to be a good test for Anderson County. I think Anderson County's better, better than Bearden, but I think it'll be a good test. we got to get Anderson County to move these games up to 7 o'clock. It ain't happening. Fireworks. 
I would think Harris County's would be fireworks, but I just don't think it ain't, it's not happening. Everybody likes playing at seven. Carter beat Carnes. Yeah, I don't. Thirty-seven, thirty-five. Yeah, I don't think Carnes is that good this year. I, listen, you buddy at Coastal. I don't think his boys having a good year this year that he's recruited. I don't think he. I think everybody's finally figured him out, and they're. I, I don't think he's running away like he did last year with everybody. I might be wrong on that too, but that's all right if I am. Another timeout. <laughs> so suspense is building. Yeah, it's building, ain't it? Yep. Well, I thought I had a pitcher in of out of line with that belt, but I don't guess I do. Anyway, beside the point. Oh, Nida beats Northview. They were down in that game, came back well, and won. Everybody last night was picking Northview to give Oneida fits tonight. So I don't know if that's true or not. Let's see who's calling here. Quick caller, you're on the air. What's the score of that Gordonsville Cofield game, you know? Hold on just a second, we'll give it to you. Okay. 35-34 AC wins. Harris just won 35-34. In overtime. Hold on. Not right. Yeah, 35-34 AC wins. AC wins 35-14. Gordonsville beat Cofield not 42 to 14. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. And, you know, everybody thought Cofield would go down and they didn't think Gordonsville was that good this year and that Cofield would win that game. So, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Give me that score again, Gordonsville, Cofield. 42-14. Who won? Gordonsville. And you thought? I thought Cofield would win that game tonight. Really? Everybody thought Gordonsville was way down this year, and this would be a year for Cofield to get them. Apparently not. I'll probably get fired for saying this, which if I do, I'll get to bed early on Friday nights. I'm not sure Cofield's as good as they have been the last several years. Uh, I, and I, be. and I, can't, I couldn't jump on the Cofield bandwagon after the Oakdale game. You know, they blew Oakdale out. Yeah. I think they were supposed to blow Oakdale out. Well, I, here's what I thought. I thought Oakdale would they would be a little bit better game. I didn't think it would be a biggest blowout as it was. I thought it would be a blowout, but I didn't think it'd be that big. Okay. Uh, I didn't think it would be uh, a huge blowout. There's there's my granddaughter right there with the belt from that. Her dad brought it for all the track girls to see. <laughs> the belt's bigger than that line. That <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, I heard my granddaughter. You can't see it, but that's beside the point. That's my granddaughter with the. If that's the guest picker tomorrow, like everybody's saying. Jesse did an article on uh, Sweetwater. They might be legit. They, they Sweetwater yeah. might be legit. They beat, they beat, Kingston pretty handily, and now they've went and got a running clock down there on. I forget who it was. Now everybody thought tonight that uh, some of the pickers I was listening to last night that was that Kingston would win that game tonight uh, at Campbell County. Uh, can't remember if everybody if it was unanimous on the picks, but everybody thought Kingston would go up. Or Campbell County must have played them a really good game. Now Campbell County plays Clinton next Thursday night. That's the game of the week on Thursday night TV, which will be a huge game for Clinton. Playoffs. Playoff implications. It's a game that Clinton needs to win. I, I'm not going to say it's a must win, but it's about as close to being a must win as, as you can get. And you hate to put the pressure on the kids just in the in the seventh week of the season. But, hey, we are getting down to the nitty-gritty here. We're starting to – people are starting to write their names in the, you know, in the spots in ink, and some of them are drying up. So uh, – and I've also – it's been mentioned to me, everybody thinks Powell is going to absolutely blow out Oak Ridge. Blow them out. I don't know that I see that. I don't know that I see a blowout with Oak Ridge and Powell. Scored how many points Oak Ridge can score? If Oak Ridge can't score points, maybe we could they'll get, be in uh, trouble. Maybe you could get Coach Gaddis to come down here. We get Coach Gaddis back on the show. I think he'll come next Friday night. Maybe I won't be him. here. You and him will hang out together. You won't be here. Where will you be? I will be in Atlanta. Well, you just need to stay up here, but you can't go to Atlanta. I can't do it. I got to go. You got to stay here. Help me get a No, I think, I think the 
the pal defense is not as good. It's just I can pop and way. they're not as good up front. They're not as good at linebacker. Um, and Oak Ridge will have to score 28 to 35 points because Potts is getting more healthy. Aiden Green is hard to guard. The Faust kid just a great football player. The Faust kid might be the best high school football player in town. What positions he play? He plays linebacker, wide receiver, tight end. He, he's just good. But he don't pass the eye test for colleges. You know, his body's, you know, he's 5'11", 6 foot, but he's, he's just a football player. Um, I was talking about an Irish County kid tonight. I don't remember which one he was talking about. Talking about some of the offers he's had. He said that he had had an offer now from Iowa. The who's wide what, he, receiver he's foul. A, he, he, yeah, he's a wide receiver. Yeah. He's a big old tall lanky kid too. He's tall. I think he's six five. Yeah, he's six five. I thought they said he was six five. Unless tonight. I'm six foot. Yeah. Maybe they was talking about the other kid that was six. <laughs> they got a couple of tall lanky receivers. He might be six three, six two. Well, he's yeah. getting some. I think he's. No, big, he is. I, I think he's. I'm trying to. Memphis. Iowa now. And there was somebody else. The I one thing that everybody's got to understand, I get a lot of text messages on this. So I finally just had to go to a source and find out what the deal is. Kids now get offers from colleges that are non-committable. Now think about that. They offer kids scholarships and they're non-committable. Why? I, I, I have no I, I have no idea what the benefit is for the kid or the the school. I mean, if you're a school, why do you offer someone if they can't commit to you? That's a good question. It's a real good question. But I, I think it actually could benefit the kid because the, the other schools don't know if it's committable or not. I mean, if I get an offer from Iowa, Ohio State, and Wisconsin, and I'm a Tennessee kid, it probably helps me maybe get another offer from like an MTSU, a Kentucky. Mississippi, you know, it, it, it's got to help you a little bit when they start seeing schools in the FBS offer you. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. So I think it can help the kids some, but yeah, there's there's such thing now as, as non committable offers. You know, I just think there's so many kids that could play Division One college football that gets overlooked. It's not even funny. And they go on and have fabulous careers at, you know, at smaller schools or whatever you yeah. want to call them. And uh, I just think there's a lot of kids that way. I, and, you know, I know, you've heard me say this before. I always thought watching him, Parker McKinney could play Division One college football. I mean, I always thought that. I always thought that. I thought more on the defensive side than the, the <laughs> offensive side. But, man, he's tearing it up on the offensive side of the football right now. Yep. He is flat out tearing it up and has been for quite some time now there. As I can tell so, Williams, you watch him play football, you're like, man, this kid's a stud. Didn't have a lot of big offers. Goes to Austin P. I took him. I took him on a visit to Tennessee Tech. He said, "You can play defense down here, but you won't be able to play offense. You're just not good enough with the ball." He led the OVC his uh, sophomore year in all-purpose yards. <laughs> I mean, it, it's something else. You'll take a quick commercial break. Yes, take a quick commercial break. Hey, we'll take five and uh, or two or whatever, and we'll be right back. Just in a couple minutes here on the Free Miracle Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference. So we can all continue to move forward together. I am a simplicity dealer. This business is my life, my career. If you need a new mower, I'll help you choose the model that will make your property look its very best and even let you take a test drive. When it does need service, you can rely on my factory service training and genuine parts because I don't just sell products. I build relationships. I am a simplicity dealer. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys, 
Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at On-Site Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the uh, Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. And, uh, wow, some big games in uh, week yeah. six. Big yeah. games tonight, some big numbers put up. Uh, Sutton game up in Harris County, 35-34. AC pulls it out in overtime. Greenville goes to DB and wins a game tonight, 21-20. to uh, Clinton wins 51 to nothing, I think. Kingston wins, I think, 41-40. to uh, Oliver Springs wins again tonight. Cofield apparently got beat tonight pretty pretty handily. Let's see if I missed anybody. Oliver Springs, you say beat? Okay. Yeah, oh, Oliver Springs won, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what surprises me was the score of the Clinton game. The Purple Pounders beat Campbell County to start the season. And then Clinton beat them pretty good. So that that's 
That's a good sign for Clinton going up there that's Thursday big, night. Thursday night. Right. Thursday night, it's a big game up Campbell County. That's uh, said any way you want to say it, but it has playoff contention uh, implications with it. It's a game Clinton needs to win. It, well, it's a game Clinton's got. If Clinton don't win that game, and get behind the eight ball again. And then you got to worry about somebody else doing something that you should have done for yourself. So Clinton needs to win that game Thursday night and go up and beat Campbell County and, you know, it's probably something I think they can do. We'll see uh, what happens. So uh, that's a big game. But uh, Oak Ridge is off tonight. Oak Ridge plays Powell next Friday. And that's a game that'll be interesting to see what how it turns out too. That, that's that's going to be big. Should be. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Yeah, on the uh, Campbell County Kingston game, Kingston uh, it was back and forth, tied up most of the game. Kingston uh, scored and took a 41 to 34 lead. Campbell County come down and scored, missed the extra point. I think it might have been blocked. And Kingston has the ball late in the game around the five-yard line of Campbell County. And they're going in for a touchdown, and they took a knee at the one to keep from Campbell County getting the ball back. And that's the way the game ended. They just run the clock out. Smart coaching. Yep. Smart coaching. 41 to 40. 41 to 40. Okay, man. Thank you. Okay. Bye. That's some smart coaching right there, Cox. Yeah. To even think that in that heat of a game like that, that's smart coaching on Panky's part. Good coaching on his part. Sure is good coaching. Sure is good that's coaching. That's a big win for Kingston. They yes. went up there last year and got beat pretty bad, didn't they? Uh, you know, I'm not for sure, but I, you very well could be right, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I can't you're right. remember. I can't remember, really, but I believe you're right, though. So. Quick caller, you're on the air. Hey, uh, good evening there to you, Jonathan. You and, you and David there. David, I hope you're doing okay, buddy. What? Where you been? Uh, I've, I've been probably uh, either in bed there up here, Anderson County, or up here at the park there, whatever there. But anyway, uh, I, I, just want, I wanted to ask there first off there. David, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Well, I'm, I'm hoping you're doing good. I know you've had some medical issues. Yeah, I have, but I, I'm doing good. We're, we're getting old, buddy. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> you got that right. But anyway, I, I was going to ask you guys there about uh, the the game coming up tomorrow there uh, with uh, Tennessee and, and Florida there. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I've been hearing there for years and stuff there. We're like, you know. Tennessee, they got the better team, they got the better team there, blah, 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 whatever, but it don't seem like we, we've not been beating them there, but until they beat them, I, I'm not going to say that, yeah, they're going to beat them, <laughs> but until they do it there, I just, I just don't know, I, want, I just want to ask you guys there how you feel about it there, if the balls, if they, they're going to beat them tomorrow there. Uh, you know, regardless there if the Cedric Tillman's gonna be a play or not, whatever there. But Tillman's out. He had to have surgery. He had to have surgery. Yeah, Cedric Tillman's out. He's out. Oh, he, he's definitely out then. Yeah, Cox just told me he had surgery. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, he's had to have a little knee work done. Last time I was told it was game time decisions. What I heard this morning. So, yeah, well, they kept there. that pretty quiet to him. There is like a. <laughs> game time decision there yeah. you know that's gonna hurt them uh, you know quite a bit there but you know we'll see what happens there but you know there's a i don't think i think there's it's sold out there yeah it is there <laughs> and uh, if you if you want to buy a ticket to get over there and watch them play tomorrow you, you better be willing to shell out some money there <laughs> whatever but uh we'll see what happens there because you know, all these years in the past there, uh, one time out of what, like 16, 17 years, we beat them. But uh, we'll see what happens there. But I just want to ask you guys what your opinion was there. 
and I'll, I'll hang up and listen to you. And I, I appreciate you guys there uh, putting on this program and stuff there. Okay, Mike. Hey, we're going to talk to Jesse, and then we'll tell you about Tennessee what we think, okay? Just listen. Okay, I appreciate right. you so much, Gary, guys. All right, see you, bud. Okay, bye. Hey, Jesse, everybody here tonight took uh, Greenville to win. <laughs> they did. I'll start getting up. I'll start getting up there when y'all did. We all, we all took Greenville to win. Uh, you know, we, we all we didn't have it 21 to 20, but we all took Greenville to win. <laughs> I just let you know. I mean, I just thought I'd let you know in case she's interested. Oh, well, I mean, y'all just send me your stuff by email, and I'll start putting your pics on our website. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my. Showed him the text here, commercial break, so he had to bust you. <laughs> I had to I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, we, do, we do it in good fun, and, and I'm totally okay with that. Uh, there are some people that take it a little too far, and we try to handle that when it's on, but I, I love a good ribbing. I can take it, but it's, uh, it, it's a tough week this week. There are a lot of close games, and I, I seem to be on the wrong end of a lot of those. I got a big question to ask you. How impressed were you from West last night beating out Cole? How impressive was that? Well, we knew West was really good, and I think the most thing that the, the thing that impressed me the most was just the resolve of that team. Uh, they fell down early. They fell down four times. I think they had to rally four times in that game. They had a punt block that led to an Alcoa touchdown. They had a field goal block that le was led that led to an Alcoa touchdown. Uh, they had the just atrocious penalty call there late in the fourth quarter that went against them and they just kept coming and kept making plays and they played the entire second half without their best defensive player um, C.J. Smith a defensive end who's probably going to be playing power five football in two years so it, it was just a really impressive kind of mental effort not just the physical effort that they put forth out at Alcoa yeah, I thought the I thought the uh, play you're talking about, the penalty that you mentioned there, just briefly. Uh, man, that was <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah, it was. I try not to bash too too many referees because we do have an official shortage. But man, it was it was really bad. I mean, the kid was three or four feet from even being out of bounds. And um, but on the flip side of that, even though that that play went against the West, it. The Alcoa quarterback exited the game because of that, and I hate to hate that for Alcoa. The sophomore comes in and immediately completes a pass, and I thought threw a fairly decent jump ball there on the final play that that a West linebacker just happened to get up to the ball a little bit faster and a little bit higher than the Alcoa receiver, and just made a great, great play. But uh, it was just a just a fantastic game. Alcoa, they're not gonna they're not gonna just beat themselves up too much over this game. They've lost regular season games before and gone on to win state championships. So that's the ultimate goal for Alcoa. They got better because of that game last night, and they'll move forward and, and be a, an overwhelming favorite to, to win an eighth consecutive state championship. agree with you. Hey, listen, that interception, I didn't know that was a linebacker that intercepted that pass last night, but, man, that interception, that young man got up to get that. He did, and uh, the fact that he could bring it down and then be still in play and, and have that interception count was remarkable. And that's a good play. Always has really, yeah. West always has really good linebackers, seemingly, uh, but he he seems to be a little bit more athletic uh, than than some of the ones they've had in recent years, for sure. Yes, I know. You, I think Jonathan said you said Anderson County. Not uh, what? What do you think? Well, I mean, the first half just kind of left you scratching your head because after them getting beat last year 45-7 to I think by Elizabethan in the second round of the playoff you thought that Anderson County would come out and just be extremely motivated be extremely crisp in the first half especially because Walker Martinez was playing tonight, he did not play in that playoff game last year and they they promptly scored to go up 7 to nothing. but from that point on they just really struggled offensively up until half, just uh, turnovers um, just failing to, to really get the run game going with Nick Moog, which they've been able to do seemingly all year. and Just, um, I don't know, just didn't have it there mentally against against um, an okay Elizabethan team. I mean, they're better than their record indicates, but this isn't the same Elizabethan team that played in three state championships. And they don't have Bryson Rollins at quarterback anymore. Uh, they're still trying to figure out their offensive identity at quarterback, but 
Uh, I thought did a really good job of, of really going towards Bryson Bow in the second half, and that led to the the first score of theirs in the in the early in the third quarter. Uh, some pass interference penalties on Elizabeth and allowed them to get down inside the five, and Anderson County took advantage of that and then tied the game up shortly thereafter. And uh, just a classic game. Went into overtime. Anderson County came in first play. Overtime went straight to Val. A touchdown. Elizabeth and scores on their first play. Decided to go for two. And Anderson County kind of bowed its back there at the goal line. But we're going to see that matchup probably again, I would assume. Um, and it's just the, the same old tale. Anderson County's going to have to go through an Elizabeth end or a Greenville if they want to try to get to a state championship game. So. It's, uh, it was nice of them to kind of get the monkey off their back a little, but they're not completely over that hurdle just yet. Yeah, what kind? I mean, I, I just think I think Greenville, Greenville sent a loud and clear message last. I mean, tonight to Anderson County. I think they sent one tonight. Yeah, I mean that that win that they had tonight was really impressive. That's a really good Dobbins Bennett team. One that has a, a really big offensive line, really a good run game. Uh, Greenville came up with two big defensive stands uh, inside the five against Dobbins Bennett in the first half. And and Dobbins Bennett came down late in the game, went for two to try to win the game late, didn't get it. But uh, both of those teams are going to be factors in the playoffs. Greenville obviously being in 4A and Dobbins Bennett being in 6A. I don't think we've heard the last of this Dobbins Bennett team. I think there are a lot of people that are high on them up there. Jesse, uh, did the football game – Tonight at Anderson County is. Does that worry you if you're an Anderson County fan that that game was that close, knowing what Greenville did to Elizabeth and at Elizabethan, and seeing what Science Hill and Elizabethan have done to each other? Does do you, do you think that I thought Anderson County was rolling? I thought Anderson County was much better than Elizabethan going to that game. I thought he, I thought it was just a you know, one of those deadlocks at Greenville and AC were going to play each other in the quarterfinals at Anderson County. It was concerning, especially, the, again, that first half. You think that maybe there's just some kind of mental obstacle that, that Anderson County has against these teams, whether it's Elizabeth or Greenville. And certainly they did a good job of overcoming that in the second half. The thing that worried me the most was that I watched Gavin No try to run horizontally, sideline to sideline, chasing guys in the first half. And that hamstring, it's just not right. I mean, I have video that I could show that of just him just kind of pulling up uh, he's limping noticeably, and I know he's tried to give that thing time and rested, but it's it's hard to get over a hamstring injury. And so I don't know how effective he's going to be going forward. They certainly need him for the playoffs. But if I'm Davey Gillum or the, the Anderson County coaches, I know it's hard to sit that young man. He's been so such a cornerstone of that program the last few years, and it's his senior year and he wants to play. But they need him for the long haul. Uh, I, I, they need to get him some more rest to get that hamstring right. He just was not right tonight. And uh, it was just, yeah, that that's not the performance that they wanted to start the second half of their season. You're a golfer, I'm a golfer. It's kind of like shooting two or three under par on the front nine. You make that turn to the second nine, you immediately double or triple number 10. And that's kind of what it was like in the first half tonight. But they, they got a little mojo back, but they definitely had some things to work on going forward. Yeah, I see what you was talking about with No tonight. He didn't. He, he he just didn't even look like he was walking right. That pissed me off. Yeah. I mean, it's not about regular season wins at this point. Get the kid ready. Somebody stand up to him and say, "Listen, dude, I, I want to win playoff games." Yeah, he's uh, he's he's definitely. I agree with Jesse. I don't think he's right yet. Uh, so Jesse, it was obvious he was hurt out there playing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can send you a video of him chasing a, a running back towards the side. I stood over on the Elizabeth sideline because it was a lot less crowded. And there's a play that came my way, and, and he was chasing towards the sideline, and he just he had to pull up, and he was just limping extremely noticeably. Wow. Hey, so let's go off Anderson County a little bit and uh, go to that Greenville DB game. Was that, 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 was a, that was a man's game up there tonight? It was, and uh, – I, I did a lot of research on this Dobbins Bennett team because I'd, I'd heard such good things about them and the, their opponent from the previous week just talked about how physical and and big they were up front and uh, they had some really good running backs. The opponent was re- extremely impressed with their skill players and I was like, man, this ought to be a really 
big matchup with Greenville. What I what I don't like about Greenville is they just don't have that dynamic runner in the in the backfield like they had with Mason Gudger. And I know they had him last year and they still couldn't get it done. Maybe the opposite happened this year. But you look at their stats each and every week and they just don't have that guy that can go for 150 or 200. And that's what worried me about Greenville going into that game tonight. But they got it done uh, with their quarterback and their receivers with Mason Law and Ajate Dabb, uh, two probably underrated receivers in East Tennessee. And, and Law's had over 100 yards receiving. Uh, over 100 yards receiving. Dabbs is right there around 90 to 100. And uh, Brady Quillen, the quarterback, he, he's not going to be playing power five football. He's not the prototype guy. He's 5'10", 165, but uh, just a smart, heady quarterback and got the ball to his playmakers. And, again, that defense at Greenville just came up with some big, big stops, not only on the two-point conversion late, but there in the first half, uh, stopping Dobbins Bennett at the one-yard line twice. Hey, for our viewers, give us some facts. And I think I've read some tweets that you've put out. Did you say the last team to beat Maryville and Alcoa in the same year was 1999? 1999, and Heritage and William Blunt both did it. And that, that sounds just crazy to say, especially given where William Blunt and Heritage are as football programs really over the last 10 years. But they're back in the 90s. I mean, they were legit. Legit obstacles for Maryville and Alcoa, apparently, and uh, they're in the same season. Heritage beat Alcoa and Maryville, and so did William Blunt. Um, that seems to be a lifetime ago, given what Alcoa and Maryville have done since the year 2000. But that was the last time it's, it's happened. West may have an opportunity to, to join that exclusive club later on this season as West will take on Maryville in a, just an unbelievable game. It should be just as good as the Alcoa one. Uh, it's, it's good as both of those teams play defense as good as they run the ball it should be kind of equal um, an equal match game Jesse with, yes when is that game uh, I, it's in late October if I remember right it might be week 10 I have to look that up but it, it's sort of late in the year and it's you know it's not a region game but so it's kind of an odd time to have that matchup but I believe it's like week 9 week 10 I think I've heard week 10 too I think you're right Hey, Jesse, next week, I know you got back into some region play for some teams. Powell, Oak Ridge for our viewers. Campbell County, Clinton for some of our viewers. Uh, what do you see? What do you look forward to next week? And, uh, you know, we start talking now. This is kind of the pretenders from the contenders time. Uh, talk a little bit about what, what's going on in our area. Well, Clinton has to get a win. They need a win, a region win, in a really bad way because if they don't, I don't see how they claw themselves out of that 0-3 hole in region play and get to the playoffs. I'm sure there's probably some scenario where it might be able to happen, but it's a Clinton team that's high-powered offense. they got athletes everywhere, but they are in a desperate, desperate spot. And, of course, Campbell County tonight is coming off of a loss. They had an extra point blocked in the final minutes there against Kingston and lost 41 to 40. So they're coming in wanting to into that game against Clinton, wanting to get a win as well, and, and knowing they need to to get another region win to, to cement their place in, in the playoff bracket. So uh, that's a big time matchup between those two teams. They've given us classics in the past, and I expect a, another one. Uh, both just high powered offenses. It should be a fun watch. And and Powell's a team that. He's got it going a little bit again after a tough start to the season. I think they've won three or four in a row. They handled Halls tonight, and uh, it's a chance for them to kind of put their name back in the conversation in 5A because everyone is talking about West. Not nearly as many people are talking about Powell, even though they're the defending state champion. So they go out and thump Oak Ridge for some reason. Um, you know, that definitely gets everybody's attention. So I think that's a an opportunity for Powell to try to get people looking at them again, but it's also an opportunity for Oak Ridge to uh, shake up the, the waters, stir up the waters a little bit. And uh, as we get into October and maybe they get Elijah Rogers back, uh, maybe this Oak Ridge team can make an unexpected run. Play. Was there a big play late in the ball game or in the third quarter? of a fumble Anderson County had inside their 10 that Elizabeth and thinks they've recovered? There was, and I yeah, I couldn't – I was right there at the back of the end zone, but I couldn't really tell who got it. I, I think by the time the the waters parted, uh, an Elizabethan player had it. But 
I think uh, the officials had already seen or maybe saw at the bottom of the pile that that uh, Anderson County had that football. So um, I don't know if, if that was controversial or if that turned the tide at all. I mean, certainly it allowed Anderson County to keep the football and go ahead and score. But uh, it was, um, yeah, it was hard for me to see actually who had that football. Well, good deal, good deal. Uh, well, hey, we appreciate you calling in. We know you always have busy Friday nights, and we thanks uh, for the time. Hey, I know you're a college football expert too. What's uh, give us a score tomorrow? Uh, I'm I'm like everybody. Uh, I guess I'll lean with Tennessee this one. I'll, I'll take them to win, maybe somewhere around 35-21, something like that. I just think the the momentum, the the feel good mojo, all that stuff is just in, in Tennessee's corner going into this game and uh yeah just like their chances to, to to beat the gators tomorrow all right brother thank you buddy all right yes sir we'll have y'all have a good one see you. uh <coughs> i hope jesse's right but does it does the tennessee florida game does it not have the same scenario that other tennessee florida games have had in the past everybody thinks tennessee's going to win tomorrow and tennessee always winds up dropping an egg somewhere David, I, is this the year? Is this is this different this year? I don't know. Is Hopple ready to in year two to win that big essay, to win that big game? Is Tennessee ready to win? Is Tennessee back? Or are we back part of the way, all the way? Are we back good enough to beat Florida tomorrow? I, I think Tennessee's been here before and they've never done it. Every, everybody's thought they were going to do it. Everybody's talking about Tennessee beating Florida for years, and it don't happen. I don't see. I think you know. I've, I just rem I remember hearing this stat for some reason for three or four straight years. The team that can run the football in this matchup, whatever team can rush for over 100 yards, you know. I've heard that. You know, it's like the record's like 90%. Yeah. Um, but this, I, I don't. I don't remember a time, David, that. A Tennessee team has been favored by this many points. What is it? Is the spread 10 tomorrow still? It's 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Well, I, today on the radio on, on Wish, I always call in on Friday and we talk high school and college football, me and Ron Meredith do. And, you know, I, I thought Tennessee, I said today, I think Tennessee will win by 10. I, I don't know. But listen, I don't know. Does Tennessee have running backs to rush for 100 yards? Can they combine rush for 100 yards? I don't know, Kent. I mean, that's a question. I think what everybody does, falls asleep on with Hypel's fast-paced offense is he likes running that football. Yeah, he does, and I think sometimes he runs it when he should pass it, and sometimes he passes it when he should well, run he, it. He'll, he'll run it to keep you honest. Yeah. But I I think here's what I'll say. If, if they go into the fourth quarter and it's close, Florida's going to beat them. If Hoppel loses this game tomorrow, they will be on him, and I'm talking Tennessee fans. It it will be unreal Sunday morning. But I'll tell you what I it think. It will be unreal. I'll tell you what I think he could do. I think he could blow them out. For his sake, I, I, that's I, what he I, needs. I don't, I, don't, I don't think. I don't think it will be. <laughs> For his sake, that's yeah, what he needs. I don't to think do. it'll be a four or seven point game. To me, I think when you see games like this, I think Tennessee either comes out and they lose a close one, or they absolutely just come out and lay the wood on them. So you don't think Tennessee's going to win a game that's three, four, I, seventeen, I or something like that? You think I Tennessee don't. wins for twenty-one, I think twenty-eight? I think like Tennessee that. finds a way to lose if it's close. Or they find a way to win big. Or they just come out and they, they're, just, hey, yeah, we're just better than you all. We're going to. I'm going to be honest with you. You could call me tomorrow afternoon at, say, 7 o'clock, and I wouldn't be surprised. If I hadn't listened to the game or watched the game and you told me Florida won by 14, I wouldn't be shocked a bit. I just – I think – Not it, a bit. I think right now – and, you know, it's, it's, it's in high schools. If you look at high school football, you know, you see the same result with programs. I think right now – Florida has just got that mental edge on Tennessee. I think they've had it for a long time. I heard today on Sports Talk that Peyton Manning was never favored by more than three and a half points against Florida. Tennessee's not been favored, I don't think, in an SEC game outside of, I think they said maybe Missouri. 
and Vandy by more than 10 points. So here's what happens tomorrow. Let's just say Tennessee does win big or, or they win the game, period. It doesn't really matter. Then the talk starts. Tennessee's going to beat Alabama. Tennessee's going to beat Georgia. Knowing good and well, Tennessee is definitely not on the level of either one of those two teams right now. I don't know if they're on the level of Florida yet, but we'll see. I just think tomorrow is, could be let down Saturday in Knoxville, just like it's been in the past. It just very well could be. And Mike, to answer your question, I picked Tennessee today on the radio to win by 10. I didn't give a score, but I, I just said they'll win by 10. So, they, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be high scoring or low scoring. You, Cox is probably right. If Tennessee wins, it'll be big. And if they lose, it could be close, real close. Uh, it bothers me to know that their leading receiver is out. Bennett kept it a good secret because they they were saying after t t this morning, or in, I think the way the paper indicated, if it's a game time decision, I didn't know he'd had surgery. So that's that's big news to me. I find that I find that uh, <laughs> that's really hard to that's really a hard pill to swallow this late in the ball game. I think that hurts Tennessee more than than it helps them for sure, for sure. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit. That I don't know if I answered your question, Mike. Uh, but we tried. Uh, I, 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 I pick it. I pick Tennessee to win tomorrow. You know, Ron Barry used to tell me, "Don't pick with your heart. Pick with your brain." Well, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna pick with my heart tomorrow, and I'm gonna pick Tennessee to win. I like to see him win. But uh, I think they, I think they're the better team. I think if you didn't, I think if you watched the Florida play the first two or three games of the season, you watched Tennessee through the first three games of the season or whatever, and you didn't know it was Tennessee versus Florida, I would say you take Hendon Hooker, he's a better quarterback. I think you take Tennessee, they're the better team. Richardson hasn't thrown a touchdown pass all year. Yeah, but can Tennessee stop him from running the football tomorrow? Yeah, he's not healthy. You don't think he's uh, he's not? No, he's I don't ba know. He's, he's banged he's up. Banged up. Okay. Yeah, well, that, that helps. I mean, I just, that helps. You know, it's one of those deals. Uh, that helps. Uh, that, that helps. Let's I would see, be very. I'd what be, year was it that Tennessee played Florida and their quarterback got hurt? And they brought somebody <laughs> in off the bench and they absolutely demolished Tennessee. You think it was in Florida that that happened? Maybe. So was that not Chris Leak though? It came in. I don't remember who it was. It came in. Just I'm just being honest. I don't remember who it was. I don't. I just think it happened. For some reason, my brain's telling me that that happened. It very well could not have happened. The biggest backup quarterback debacle that Tennessee's ever had was an SEC championship game against LSU. Yeah. Remember they knock out their quarterback right before half. Tennessee wins. They go to the Rose Bowl. Yep. And they lose, and they don't go to the Rose Bowl. And um, the quarterback. Remember, he just took over the game in the second half. LSU's took backup quarterback. Backup quarterback just took the game over. Yeah, they yeah. Sure, it sure did. Hey, let's take another break, and we'll be right back here on the Free Market Clinic Friday Night Score. We're, we'll be right back. Football is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your wreck into a check. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. associated with the COVID-19 vaccine. But the reality is, it's safer than being tackled by a Tennessee Titan. Give it a shot. Find a free vaccine appointment today at COVID19.tn.gov. 
College degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Beautiful yards make a statement. And beautiful yards come from Simplicity Mowers. Their exclusive free-floating mower decks with full-width rollers track the contours of your yard for a perfect cut. So visit your neighborhood Simplicity dealer today and start the conversation about your lawn. Simplicity, the way to a beautiful lawn. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. OEB Law today and let us turn your motorcycle wreck into a check. You got a pain in your neck, just turn that wreck into a check. Get the money you need, get the money you want. Call OEB Law. Welcome back to the uh, Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. And uh, if you, anybody wants to talk a little high school football, we'll talk that. We'll talk college football. We've been talking both. I said we weren't going to talk until 1130, but we got forced into it a little bit early. That's all right. Mike, I hope we answered your question. If we didn't, you can call back and shoot us another, and we'll try to answer the best we can. But, uh, you know, uh, some big ball games tonight, not just in the area, but around here, East, East Tennessee-wise, some big ball games. I think we're starting to see a little bit of what the playoff picture is going to look like in 5A, 4A, uh, 3A. We, we know it'll be Alcoa. They'll be right there in the mix of it. Uh, we're starting to see some of that. We're starting to see a little bit in 2A and 1A. So it's starting to all starting to fall in place. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know how to emphasize this anymore to the Clinton people. You need to go next. Uh, you don't need to stay home watching on TV. Thursday night, you need to go to Campbell County and support the Dragons and get out. But because this is a this is a bi a big game for the Dragons, they've got to win it. This is a must. It's it's a must win game. It is a must win game. Yeah. Quick call, you on the air. Hey, Cleaner, uh, was it a Clinton game tonight? And don't win to, don't mean to sound like Johnny Major's Legion of the Miserable. It's hard to be miserable with a 51 to 21 win. But man, Clinton's got to clean some things up before Campbell County. I mean, I, I think they had 25 penalties tonight. It was really sloppy at times. And, you know, I, I think I, they've really got to clean it up to, to, to beat Campbell County. Somebody else told me it was just 
every other play was a flag. So, well, they had they had two they had two drives where they had three penalties in a row. So it was like they had a third and thirty five and a third and thirty eight and back to back drives, and uh, they were calling holes two and three three plays in a row, and I don't know. Are the guys these days coached so poorly or the, the coaches not understanding what the refs are looking for in the holes? Because I've heard you guys talk about you had a Fulton game earlier in the year that had like uh, a whole lot of penalties, like 30, 35 penalties, but it was just crazy tonight. And they, they missed a whole lot. They missed a roughing the punter. You know, they missed some obvious things. And uh, it was just sloppy and the game just went forever. And it just messed up the flow of the game. It was just one right after the other. And I don't know, what is it? I mean, what's going on with our refs or our, our players or our coaching right now? I don't know if it's because some of the officials are young, because they're so, because TWSAA officials are so, they're so desperate to get officials. I don't have any idea, but it's been that way since game one this year, all the way through to now, multiple, multiple I mean, we've talked about it here on Friday night, how it takes away from the flow of the game. And, I, you know, I, I know most, I know a lot of these officials, and, and I know they don't want to be the center of attention, but maybe all these, maybe they've been told to clean it up and all these penalties are actually happening. But I know Coach Keith has addressed it here on the show with us and their Wednesday night show that they've got to be more disciplined and they've got to clean this stuff up in order to continue to advance on and do what they want to do. So I know he's, a, I know he's, a, I know he's talking about it. I, I'm, maybe the kids are just not getting a message and maybe he's, I, I don't know. I don't know if they've cleaned it up enough that uh, he thinks they've got it cleaned up and there's still something they've got to work on. But you're right, it, Clinton's got to work on it and get the penalties cleaned up. And if they could do that, I, I think it'd take care of a lot of problems for them. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Connor, I'll tell you this. I, I sit in the press box at Fulton, and uh, we they, they stream all their games. And one of the best high school football plays I've ever witnessed uh, got called back tonight. And you go back and you look at every offensive lineman in that play when that flag was thrown. There was not one offensive lineman that was holding. And the kid, Marcel Jackson, I mean, he, he's, it's like he's a video game. He runs for about 65 yards. He's about to get tackled. He pitches the ball to, a, uh, to another young man. He runs in for a touchdown, 85 yards. And he gets called back for a hold. And the ref, instead of just making the call, he runs over to the Fulton sideline saying he grabbed him by the shirt, he gra and he's pulling his shirt. It was almost like he was coming over to justify the call. Yeah. Before he's even announced the call. But at the end of the night, I mean, there, I, I asked the guy, I said, you got that on replay. He goes back and reviews it three or four times. We're watching every lineman there. No one has a hold of anybody's jersey. I don't doubt that. And it's almost like if they go about five or six plays without fl throwing a flag, they're like, oh, no, we've not thrown a flag in a while. And, and it's and, and there is no flow to football games right now at all. I heard in Harrison County's game there was a big fumble recover uh, by Elizabeth. They came out with the ball. Tonight, Fulton's game starts with a fumble. They point toward Fulton. They get together. They give it back to Bearden. <laughs> Same thing happened to Grace Christian at Lakeway. They, they get a big fumble recover. They come out holding the ball up. They point it. They come back, talk about it. Both teams have already switched possessions. They give it back to Lakeway. Wow. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know. But I heard there's some big pass interference calls up there in Anderson County tonight. Uh, but here's what I would say. As a coach, if you consistently have 20, 25, 28 penalties, at some point, it's got to come back on you and your kids. Now, if you go play a football game and you have average eight to ten penalties in one week, you have 25, then I think you can say, man, you know, what's going on here? But Fulton, I found out tonight, averaged 11 penalties a game, and in one game they had 27. Wow. Well, you know, in the first half, Powell had about five face masks. Three of them were the 15-yard variety. And, you know, that's, 
you know, that's a team that's a defending state champion and and well coached and, and so forth. And, and they had five face masks in the first half, I think, as against Clint last week. And so you're just seeing a lot of this kind of play. And the game just takes forever. You know, they, they I want to get home in time to watch you guys at 10 o'clock, you know, and you're not getting home till you know, 11. And so it's, uh, these games take forever. But uh, start with 7 or 7.30, caller. It's a 7.30 at Clinton, and I know Anaka County's gone to 7 o'clock, kid. And, and I don't know why I don't know everybody would not go to 7 o'clock. To me, 7 o'clock makes sense. That's when you play your playoff games. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get back and watch the show, you know. It's, but uh, it's good to be 4-2, and two, and I'm glad they're having success and hope they can get Campbell County because it would be awful hard to get there without beating that without winning that game. So, hey, Doc, I'm trying to get in to see you to get my eyes straightened out. I just ain't got good. there yet. Hey, we'll get you taken care of. I know you will. Just as soon as I get, I've, had, I've got some things i got to rearrange. So, just as soon as I can, I'll get in to see you. Hey, we'll take good care of you. All right, see you, buddy. Thanks for calling. See you. Bye. All right, man. Bye now. Coach Good Panky. On. Yes, sir. Big win tonight for, uh, for Kingston. And listen. Who come up with the idea to down it on the one-yard line right at the end? Was that your idea? I'll give you all the credit in the world for it. Uh, no, sir, it wasn't my idea. That was uh, one, of my, one of my closest coaching friends, Coach Stephen Clemens. Tell us what happened You got a phone call about it. Hey, I'm not smart enough, dude. I, I won't score. I, I'm, I'm not that smart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gave you credit for it anyway. <laughs> Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> Tell us about the game. It sounded like a barn burner tonight. Well, it was, man. Our kids, our kids fought the, the the whole game. And I'm gonna tell you, man, Campbell County, that that offense they have is uh, it, it's tough to stop, man. I I don't know if they've scored, you know, less than you know 30 points all year. Maybe one, maybe one other game, but uh, you know, the Coach Price, man, they do a great job. They they throw it all over the field. It's it, it's it's tough to defend, but. Our kids played good. They tackled good, uh, and offensively, man, we just we just made plays. We just stayed the course, uh, and, and, and I thought we were the more physical team, and uh, that's what we did, man. We just played, you know, good old fashioned Kingston physical football, and uh, I don't think they like that too much. That's not their style. <laughs> not their style, man. It's not their style. I understand. Hey, um, next week, who do you have? I, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Yeah, something's wrong with my mic. I said, next week, who do you have? Uh, we, we've got McMinn McMinn Central coming to town. Uh, another good football team, much improved from last year, and uh, so we'll have to play really good again to uh, uh, to beat those guys. Is that a region game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got back-to-back -back region games. we got uh, McMinn Central next week at home, and then we travel to uh, Signal Mountain, uh, the following week for uh, really two big region games that I, that I hope we can play well and uh, be able to win. And then uh, you know, the last game of the year, we'll go to Loudon, uh, and, and that will be the end of our region schedule. But, you know, still got a tough road ahead. Uh, you know, we just need to uh, keep playing good and keep people healthy. Are you healthy right now? We are. We are. We're, we're healthy right now. We got some guys with some nicks and bruises, uh, but they'll be, they'll be fine. Coach, we had a caller ask a second ago, and I'll ask you this question. Have you, is this a year to you, and it might be that you've got an experienced football team, well coached, have you, have you seen more penalties this year? Is, it, is the game being called tighter than it has been in the past? I think, I, I think it has. You know, I had this same discussion uh, with the referee last week, and, uh, of course, you know how it is, man. You could call, you know, you could probably call a penalty holding about every play, but, you know, this year just seems like, and, and not just against us. I mean, tonight against Campbell County, too. I mean, there's just more flags being thrown in general. Um, you know, me and Coach John Webb had the same conversation uh, Monday night after our JV played, and, and we sit there and talked about it, too, about how penalties are just they're just worse this year. I, so I don't know if, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting – I don't know. I don't know if they're getting criticized from their supervisors from the state or – I don't know, man, but they're calling they're calling a really really tight game. Well, that's what I've noticed, Coach. It's like there's more 
flags in football this year than I've witnessed in a long time, and it's and it just kills the flow of the game. It it, it does, man. It just and, and I get it, you know. But still, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about the kids. Let them play. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, I think ninety nine percent of the time, those guys they do a great job. Um, every now and then, you'll get a crew that thinks that thinks it's about them and not about the kids, and and that that's the part of it I don't like. So. Hopefully, though, they can be like everybody else, just keep learning, getting better, and, uh, you know, just let the kids play. Absolutely. Well, Coach, congratulations. David's impressed with that taking a knee on the one. Yeah, I am. I give you the credit, Coach. Uh, we'll talk to you next week, okay? Hey, yeah, you can get I'm just so PE teacher, man. I'm not that smart. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm not that smart. But I appreciate it, guys. Man. <laughs> congratulations, Coach. Thank you. All right, there you buddy. Go. See go you Wilds, go Jackets, man. That's a big win for him. Campbell County. It is. He said there. he didn't think Campbell County liked the physical part of it. Yeah. Not for sure. I, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, Kingston's always, you know, always play pretty – they play pretty tough football and down there. I think there. if you look at teams that pass the ball a lot and run that type of stuff, I would say they don't practice against a lot of – It's finesse stuff. Man. Yeah, I don't – I don't. they probably don't see much Kingston stuff through the week. You know, that's sort of like – Tennessee, you know, they throw the ball a lot, but they do run the ball a lot too. But, yeah. you know, I just don't, you know, to get back to Tennessee, I, I just think Tennessee's got to play a fall. I mean, that just really hurts not having that Tillman out tomorrow. I just, that, I mean, it hurts. Yeah. yeah sure that's, does. that's a big blow. That's a big time receiver. Uh, but, you know, if you're a 10 and a half point favorite, at home, uh, I still think you take care of business without him. You going to the game, Mark? I am. I am. It's going to be a circus. Another sellout. I got two soccer games, a football game, and then go to watch that. <laughs> so, two soccer games, yeah. a football game, and then go yeah. to so from, Tennessee. From nine to one, we'll be busy, and then we'll head over there. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Early Saturday morning to go do that soccer and go do that football, man. Get it down before Tennessee plays. I've been there yeah. done that before, so know all about that. So, uh, any surprises tonight? Did you, did you, did you, was you, I, I guess, let me ask a question. Was you surprised it took overtime for Harris County to beat Elizabeth tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, just friendly text message going on today. Somebody said, what's the Anderson County line? I said, I've got it minus 17. They said they've got it minus 21. So, I mean, I thought Anderson County would beat them by two to three touchdowns. I mean, Anderson County goes to Science Hill, absolutely lays it on Science Hill. Science Hill beat Elizabethan. Elizabethan's one and four. Yeah, not a very good football team. I mean, they're one and four. Now, people in Anderson County might disagree with you saying they're not a good football team, but they're one and four. Well, I think I mean, that's the only the, thing I can I, say. I think what the scenario – I think what the scenario has been is Elizabethan's down this year. It's not the same football team that it's been in the past, and they've not played very good football this year. They played really good football tonight. Maybe it's just because of competition, too, is Brad. Maybe. And somebody and volunteer I, you us. know, we hear in the back, look at their schedule. Well, Sides Hill's got, been beat by two different teams by 30-plus points. Right, so that's what I'm saying. Earlier in the year, I'm talking week one or week two, everybody was talking about Sides Hill how Science Hill was a whole lot better this year and it was going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. They were just being talked. It was being talked how, you know, how good Science, like I started the show off tonight with you. I listened to you and I've listened to Jesse and I've listened to other people talk how good Wes was and I watched the first two quarters and I thought, golly, this don't look like a very impressive. I said, this don't look like a West team from last year. But then I see the third and fourth quarters and I really see what everybody, I see that West is in a really tough football game with a really tough opponent. I knew that, but I seen really in the third and fourth quarters. Then I watched West in the fourth quarter sort of take that game over slowly but yeah. surely, and they sort of manhandled. Al Cole won't like me saying this. I think they just manhandled them in the end. Listen, the interception in the end zone that me and Jesse were talking about, I don't know if you've seen it. I didn't know it was a linebacker. Athletic play. Man, up there. Up there. This kid, as Randy Moss said, he didn't get mossed. <laughs> he mossed the receiver. He went up and got it. Not only did he go up and get it, but he came down with it. 
for the interception and, and you know kept control of and everything. But listen, he went up. I mean, he was up there. I never watched that telecast. Yeah, I know you don't. Um, but last night when that was going on, uh, I plugged it into my, you know, my smart TV and watched. And the first play that I see was the late hit. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And I was helping my, my oldest son with a science test. And when the interception happened, the coach's wife, that my basketball wife, that my wife is, she said, ball don't lie. Because, <laughs> I mean, literally, that, that kept the drive going. That, and, you know, and then he go down there and he makes that interception. I didn't see the interception. Like I said, we were worried about science and, the, you know, Venus and Mars. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and that, that was her saying. I looked up and Wes is celebrating. Yeah. You know, and then, so there you go. The ball don't lie. Ball don't that, lie. I never tweet about a cause. Like, I, never, I just never do it. Uh, and for the first time last night, I tweeted about it. I took a picture because it was, like I said, as soon as we turned on, it was the first play. And, David, this kid still has two steps before he gets out of bounds. And the kid from West is hitting him. And he calls a late hit, 15 yards. Oh, it was definitely it was definitely a bad call. I mean, just terrible. Come, I mean, come on. It was just a bad call. You know, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe everybody needs to do like me and go to the eye doctor and get their eyes checked uh, and get the work done that needs to be done on your eyes. And that's what I told Doc. I'll, I'll eventually get there. I'm trying to get there now. But uh, anyway, it's... Uh, you know, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just mark it off and say it's because I think the I think the officiating crews, when we used to have four or five really good ones and they'd work a rookie in, yep. I think they've had to split those crews up and cut them down to where now you might not have four or five good ones on one crew and then one rookie. I think you've got more non-veteran officials calling the calls. A lot of people have got tired of the abuse they take at the games, leaving from the games. And, and listen, I don't blame them. I wouldn't take yeah. it either. For what they make, no. And for what these – I would go pick cans up if I had to have money that bad. Yeah. And I wouldn't take that mile than on Friday night from not, not not one person, not in the stands or not on the sidelines, would I be screamed at and called every name in the book. You know, there'd be a lot of, there'd be a lot of fines on Monday. There'd be a lot of coaches that'd be watching the game from – wherever but it wouldn't be on the field because I'd throw them I would have to be quick with the trigger and I was I heard this from a guy I've never thought about this this way I heard this from a guy about football Now basketball you couldn't do it because they don't make enough money to gain but they said on Friday nights that they think that a crew a seven man crew should make anywhere from 300 to 400 dollars a football game and they said if they did, they wouldn't be short on officials. And they said these schools make enough money at the gate for high school football games to be able to hand out two grand to a group of officials. I'd buy that. You know, they're charging what, seven, ten bucks a person right now? Yeah, maybe eight. I mean, if you think about that, think about this. I heard there was a gate this year in our area that was $27,000. Twenty-seven thousand dollar gate in our area. Wow. What's two thousand dollars to get the best seven officials you can get out there? Not very. Now much. that will never be passed. Legislative board, who board of controls, whoever votes on that, that never be passed because you got some small schools. You know they they would say, well, we'll lose money. We'll lose money. Yeah, but some of the smaller schools might. If that's the case, send them a five man crew. <coughs> but that's that's kind of what we're getting back to is I've heard people now saying if we'll pay these officials more money and not $20 more, heck, $20 buy, buy you a Coke and a sticker now. But Well, let's just, it's like basketball, and I get to hear this all the time. Had you do other call two games it's on a Friday night, a girls and a boys, or you go call one college game, and you make more money for calling the one college game, yeah. and you're home way before... So yeah, the that's a theory. The basketball's a little different. Yeah, basketball's a little You play different. a bad game on Friday night and it's bad weather, you, or Tuesday night, you ain't going to have nobody there. You're, no, football, you're not. Football, you you got weather wise. Yeah, you're, you're right. I agree with you. Quick call here on it. What's going on, fellas? I'm telling y'all, the 
This Tennessee Florida game tomorrow has got me. Uh, I ain't worried about a Tennessee game like this in a while. Uh, it could be 21, 28, nothing in the first quarter. Uh, because that's the way uh, Tennessee likes to start. Florida, I think it's very important that that they can survive that first wave that Tennessee's going to be coming with, and then ugly the game up, and you know maybe get a special teams touchdown. If they can keep it close in the fourth quarter, that'll be the only chance Florida has. If it's a if it's a run, if it turns into a track meet, uh, Tennessee will run them out of the stadium. Yeah, that's, that's possible, but man, listen, this scenario is there's been many of this uh, these scenarios just like this one that we're talking about right now. Tennessee's uh, everybody thinks everybody and this everything lays out just the same way it's laying out right now with Tennessee supposedly being a better team and you know it just don't pan out. I just it just don't pan out. Tennessee's got to win tomorrow to make me a believer. Um, another thing too that I think is important, and this is for both teams because it goes both ways. The linebackers and defensive ends cannot be getting too far upfield on the bull rush. They got to have gap integrity or both them quarterbacks. If they break the pocket, they can both take off to the house. Uh, just told Cox just so, a minute ago about the quarterback from Florida. Can Tennessee contain him tomorrow? Who's a better runner, Richardson or Hooker? No, oh, Richardson for sure, but uh, Hooker's got a better arm. We hope so because Richardson's thrown zero touchdowns this year. Oh, no doubt. I know. Uh, Maybe there was a reason he didn't play last year. You uh, think so? Well, I think that Kentucky played it the way it needs to be played, and Tennessee plays it the same way. If their linebackers can can hold gap integrity and keep him in the pocket, that's where you want him. You don't want him out running around and using his legs. Because he's, he's the guy that can be running and stick his toe on the line of scrimmage and flick it with his wrist 60 yards downfield. You know what I'm saying? If Dan Mullen can't make you a good quarterback, if Dan Mullen can't make you a good quarterback, I, I don't know. I don't know who can. Hey, uh, let me ask you something. You didn't start to get. You didn't start to call off tonight about uh, anything about Cofield. Uh, uh, well, Cofield took a beating tonight, buddy. At, uh, was you shocked? Uh, I was surprised that it was this man. Them, Gordonville's got two dudes from what I was, from what I saw. Uh, they get past the first wave and they're like jitterbugs, man. It's hard to get a hold of. This uh, Cofield team, how would you rank them compared to the last eight or ten years? Is this one of the better ones or one of the bottom ones? Don't make me answer that question, Junior. Well, I mean, I just I see the Wartburg score early in the season. You know, I see some other I see some other scores. Yeah, but I mean, if you're better than the other team, you're better than the other team. I, I don't think in the past years past, I don't know that. It don't matter if they play them game one, game seven, or game ten. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just a little worried about Cofield this year. The biggest difference between this team and, like you're saying the past seven, eight, ten years, we've probably 25 to 30 mans, pounds a man on the on the line smaller this year. We've lost we lost a lot of size on, up front. And that, that, that offensive line is just not getting the push that it once did when they were running the power T formation, you know what I'm saying? Lining up in that, I don't even know what you'd call that. Just three tailbacks lined up two feet from the from the from the line of scrimmage out behind the quarterback, and come on, blow open a hole, and here we come. And you can't stop it. They can't do that no more right now. Well, hey, what do you think the score is tomorrow? Forty-two, seventeen, Tennessee. I think. You really think you? Cox said the same thing. He thinks the same top score. I, I don't think it's going to. I, I'm looking at 20, 28 to 17 or I think 28 they lose, to 18. I think if they lose a three or four point ball game or they blow them out. 
Yeah, that's what he's saying. Either it's a close ball game, they lose, or it's a, a blowout, and Tennessee wins big. And I am, I'm, yeah, that's exactly how I feel about it. I think I think it's going to be electric in that place tomorrow, and Tennessee's going to come out firing on all cylinders. And it's that first two or three drives that's going to determine what happens because. If Tennessee zip, zip, zip down the field, throwing them 15, 60-yard bomb touchdowns, then they'll, Florida will quit. That place will be so rowdy and crazy. They've already put some crazy signs on the side of the frat houses over there. They have. They have. I guess. Yeah. I noticed the pictures of some of those. We can't bring those up here on BBB TV. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I left it at that. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, whew, I'm telling you, uh, this is, uh, I've lived here a long time. I ain't seen a fan base like this in, I don't know, maybe 1998. Agree. So, we'll see what happens. We well, gotta play the game. Well, to have two back to back sellouts and one of them being accurate, I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> Tennessee's desperate to have some good football. Well, I mean, I, I hate to say it like this, but. I mean, I feel like Tennessee fans have suffered for a, lot, a long time. I mean, I would it. consider it suffering. suffering. Yeah. yeah, we but, did suffer. But, I mean, that's, you know what, the way, I, the way I look at that is, and I've told both people this, and they're Tennessee fans, and they disagree with me. But I don't feel like, okay, if a coach wins you a daddy, he's got a job till he don't want it no more. Unless he's done something where you just can't keep him. Right, but um, Philip Fulmer didn't do that. You're right. Everybody yeah, thought there was better. Job. But here's what I'll tell you, caller. That program was sexy when Lane Kiffin took it over. By the time Dooley got done with it, it was it was a it was a two or three. Uh, Philip, I'm a Lane Kiffin. I'm a Lane Kiffin fan. I like him. To go back to Philip Fulmer, though, I think after the national championship. Philip Fulmer quit recruiting. It didn't become as important to him. I think they not right after. Well, shortly. Yeah. But it, it, they they it, it dropped off and it dropped off big time. It, real big. It dropped off. I'll, I'll never forget sitting here on a Wednesday night. We wasn't here. We was across the street over in the other place, and Ron Berry was all excited because of all the recruits they had. They were all on campus. They were all in summer school, and they were all they were all there. Dennis Rogan was part of that crew. Yeah, 06. And they were all, they were all, he was so happy that they were all there. And Tennessee football was on the way. I think when it come right down to it after that, that recruiting class was all said and done, there was only two or three of them that finished the, right. finished it out at UT. The, all of them were gone. They, none, none of them finished it out except for two or three. So that was, I think, the downhill part. And I think former got to resting on his laurels a little bit. And I don't think he ever, ever thought that they would run him off until he was ready to go. I, I, I think he thought he had all the mojo and it was all behind him. He'd won a national championship, something that Johnny Majors could not bring to Tennessee. And he had, he had done the job, and I, 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 I think he just got him. He got, I think he's, he's a victim. He made his, he, he don't, I don't think he has nobody to blame but himself. Sure, I, I, I really don't. I, I'm sorry. Started making a lot of money. Started making a lot of money, and I think when he looked, you know, when he did finally look in the mirror, it was too late. He had, the train was off. The, I always say the train was off the track, and I'm one of those people that will say, yeah, well, maybe they should have kept him, but woulda, shoulda, coulda is a different thing. But I'll, I'll agree with the caller. If Lane Kiffin doesn't leave when he does, Tennessee football never goes into the dark hole they went into. He's got another natty by now. Lane Kiffin Thank you. Here. Yeah, but all right, both of you saying another natty, but you don't you think Lane Kiffin might have took him down a road though too where they'd have been put on some type of probation maybe? No. You don't think it happened? If you get a natty. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't, this day and time, I think you can do whatever you want to in college football. We're fixing to find out, see what kind of penalty they lay on for print. So they, we'll find out. They give LSU a year. What a year? What probation? Postseason? I, I don't know if it includes postseason or not. But they got a year of probation over the recruiting violations they had. They just done it. Please NCAA tell just done it. Please tell me y'all seen the video of Ed Orgeron doing the interview about getting fired from LSU. Yep, incredible video. 
that was yeah. If he if anybody ain't seen that, needs to go now and check it out because it is that good. It's worth it. Looks like he's having fun at that Miami game. Do what? He looked like he was having fun at that Miami game. Oh, hey. Seventeen million dollar. Wendy, you want me to leave? Which door you want me to go out of? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colin. Hey, if you got the type of money he got, wouldn't you be happy? Absolutely. Oh, for sure. I'd be having a blast, man. Yeah, yeah. me too. Right. See you, bud. Talk to y'all next week. Yeah, I'll see you, man. Be good. Right, see you, man. Wow. So, uh, we need to take one more break and then come back to finish up. Yeah, we can. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. agent with a simple question only to get sent to voicemail again we pick up the phone i should get this <laughs> hello this is sam how can i help you like i said we pick up the phone because it's ringing that's simple human sense ask griffin insurance agency in kingston if auto owners make sense for you this is Sam. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. Your local Ferris dealer is SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Call 865-354-0600. here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at On-Site Care. 
A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Welcome back to the uh, Free Milk Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Uh, uh, appreciate them sponsoring us tonight. And uh, man, Cox, it's hard to believe we're we're halfway through this baby. Halfway through it. I mean, it just it's and we just, ain't got fired. It, it, we ain't got fired, yeah. And it's just uh, it's it's just flying by. I mean, uh, I, I guess to to wrap it up in in some words, Anderson County wins a big game night in overtime. Uh, whether it should have been a big game or not, it was because just the uh, competition over the last two or three years with Elizabeth and in Greenville has always been a roadblock and a stumbling block for Anderson County for the playoffs. So big win tonight for AC. Clinton has a big win tonight. Got a big game Thursday night at Campbell County. Campbell County goes to Kingston tonight and loses a one-point game there, 41-40. to 40. Uh, So Clinton has a must-win next Thursday night. It's, it's just playoff implications. They've got to win that game, or they'll be in the hole. I, I, I don't know if they can come out of the. I don't know if they can come out and, and do it. It might be the scenario it, just like it was last with, year. With with Campbell County, Campbell County lost to Carnes, right? Yeah. So Campbell County losing to Carnes, you got to win this football game. You got to win the. You got to win the football game. Uh, you know, for all the people that follow Cofield and keep up with Cofield, they go to Gordonfield tonight, which is a pretty good football team. But once again, everybody said Gordonfield's down this year. But they thump Cofield tonight pretty good. So uh, we'll see if Cofield can rebound next week. Uh, Oak Ridge was off tonight. Oak Ridge plays Thursday night. They do? So Oak Ridge plays Thursday night? I thought that was Friday, Friday night. night. It's your game. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. BBB game of the week. Uh, Oak Ridge at Powell. Uh, uh, yeah, an early game. 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, That's what we like. Uh, so. Uh, you know, last time I did a 7 o'clock. Yeah. I heard that. So we'll. If it would have uh, three and a half hours, Harris County would have won. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens there uh, with Oak Ridge. I know Oak Ridge is getting some of their kids back. Uh, that big has, week for Oak Ridge. It's a big week for Oak Ridge. It's a, it's a big. You know, it's another big week for the Ridgers too. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens there. And then tomorrow, Tennessee and Florida. And man, I think you could flip a coin fifty times. And I. I don't. I don't know. Tennessee wins tomorrow. I'll, I'll say 28 to 18, 28 to 17, something like that. 10 points. 10 11 points. I think they'll win 38 21. 38 21. 38 21. But you've also said you wouldn't be shocked if it's a blowout. Yeah. I don't. I, I think. But it's a close game. I just don't know the Vols can win. Yeah. So we'll see. Tomorrow. Isn't a high tomorrow 78? So you're saying how many fake cramps will we see tomorrow? <laughs> Ten. Yeah. Times get the I'm going to say we'll 10 see. times. 10 fake cramps? 10 fake cramps. Well, yeah. If they do some fake cramp of that, that suit section, you'll hear some, my kids hear some bad words tomorrow. They probably will, so <laughs> get ready for it. Get out and support the balls tomorrow, 3 30. Uh, it's a CBS, CBS. game. Uh, we'll see what happens, man. We'll either be happy next Friday night or we won't be. We'll see. We'll see you right back here next Friday night on the free medical clinic Friday night school board. And uh, if you need uh, medical insurance, guys, get out and contact the free medical clinic. They'll take care of you. They'll help you out. That's what they're there for, to help people that doesn't have insurance. But get out and uh, support your high school teams this week coming up. And go Vols. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference. So we can all continue to move forward together. I am a simplicity dealer. This business is my life, my career. 
If you need a new mower, I'll help you choose the model that will make your property look its very best and even let you take a test drive. When it does need service, you can rely on my factory service training and genuine parts. Because I don't just sell products, I build relationships. I am a simplicity dealer. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Your grandmother's fine ch- A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Beautiful yards make a statement. And beautiful yards come from Simplicity Mowers. Their exclusive free-floating mower decks with full-width rollers track the contours of your yard for a perfect cut. So visit your neighborhood Simplicity dealer today and start the conversation about your lawn. Simplicity, the way to a beautiful lawn. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. You've dreamed about the perfect house, a place to call your own, and a place to not only stretch out, but to grow. Auto Owners protects your house because to you, it's home. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Happy to help, man. I was just over there talking to myself anyway. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. 
Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Herman High School cheerleaders here at ORUD warming up for tonight's big game. Yes, we are. Are you proud to be a devil? Yes, we are. Are you proud to be a devil? Yes, we are. Are you proud to be a devil? Yes, we are. ORUD has exciting new appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. You can make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. ORUD is your affordable energy choice. <laughs> Hammond is 136, and there have been six ties. It's been heated. The two communities circle each other on the calendar every single year, but that doesn't mean it's been particularly close here lately. It hurts my heart to put it this way, but Hammond has as many wins against Rockwood in the last 17 years as Tennessee has against Florida, which is two, in case you didn't know. Not to throw more salt on the wound, but last season at Harriman, Rockwood scored more points than it ever had against the Blue Devils in a 63-26 win. 
But you know what you can do with that record book? You can throw it out like last night's chamber pot. That's right. It's a waste to even talk about it. Oh, thank you. We've got John Webb. We've got Travis Tapp. It's Rockwood. It's Harriman. And it's only on the OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7. Someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information. That's rec into a check.com. That's OEB Law as we welcome you into our Elaine Walton of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. You can give Elaine a call. Uh, you see the numbers on your screen or the number on your screen, 423-619-6748 or uh, the other one that just appeared there, 423-334-0070. Elaine has over five years of experience. She's done over $20 million in sales in that short time. She knows what she's doing and she will take care of you in the stressful process of purchasing or selling a home. Give Elaine a call as I would like to welcome my cohort again, Mr. James Babyface Gibson. How are you tonight, sir? Hey, I'm great tonight. It's Rockwood versus Harriman. Yeah, and you kind of have uh, a little bit of an insight into this rivalry because you have been involved in the Roan County football uh, stratosphere for your entire life, basically. Oh, yeah, I grew up on the sidelines here at Rockwood watching these games as a young man, so it's uh, just a, it's a great experience. This atmosphere is unlike anything that you'll experience in East Tennessee. Uh, this is one of the best games year in, year out that you're going to witness. Well, it's been a strange year for the Harriman Blue Devils. Tonight's visitor was blown out by Kingston, Coalfield, and lost by double digits to Sell Creek. However, the other two games were blowout wins against Wartburg and Sunbright, where an average of 46 and a half points were scored. The potential is there. What do you think is holding them back? You know, you're never as good as everyone tells you when you win, and you're never as bad as they say when you lose. So when this Harriman team has lost, it's lost big. Uh, from the outside, it looks like injuries could be the case, but uh, it's kind of uncertain. We'll find out tonight. We certainly will. OEB Law Game of the Week. Uh, Lane Wall of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Oldest rivalry in Tennessee. We're glad to be here tonight, and we're glad to have you along with us. We'll preview some stuff going on around the area. We'll talk about a game that happened last night. And, of course, we'll let you know what you can expect with tonight's game as well when we get back. This is the OEB Law Game of the Week. Excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a chicken. The Harriman Utility Board works hard to ensure reliable electric power is delivered to our service area. Recurring tree trimming and maintenance is essential to preventing unplanned outages caused by falling trees. HUB crews are constantly at work during the peak growing season and respond rapidly to storm damage. As partners in our community, we urge customers to be aware of the importance of electric line right-of-way management. Find out more about current right-of-way policies at our website, hub-tn.com. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Oh, now you do your job. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. When should you get tested for COVID-19? You have symptoms of COVID-19, such as runny nose, congestion, sore throat, fever, cough, shortness of breath, muscle pain, headache, chills, or loss of taste or smell. Current testing recommendations say everyone should get tested immediately if they have symptoms of COVID-19. 
If you have symptoms, be sure to follow recommendations about how long to stay home and away from others. For more information, visit our If You Are Sick or Test Positive webpage. Nineteen fifty two. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus special purchases all Welcome back to the OAB Law Game of the Week as we welcome you back into the Elaine Wall of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Give Elaine a call. The 423 number is 619-6748 or 334-0070. Trust me, it is extremely, if you have never purchased a house, if you've never sold a home, it is an extremely stressful process. So you want a good real estate agent who knows what they're doing that can help you along in that process. Make it as uh, less stressful as completely possible. And Elaine is the person for that. Plus, she's a she's a good person. She really is, and she'll she'll take care of your case. She's not just gonna, you know, do the bare essential. She's gonna go above and beyond. And you can tell that she loves what she does. She's helped so many families in East Tennessee sell their homes and purchase new homes. So, guys, if you're out there and you're in need of buying a home or selling your home, give Elaine Walden a phone call. 423-334-0070. Uh, I want to mention this. Before we went to break there, they were showing some of these players on the field, and um, I wasn't aware of it, so I got educated from uh, from you because you knew. That was the 1992 uh, football team from Rockwood, and this is a team that went 11-0 and until the playoff, the second round of the playoffs when it got beat by Sweetwater by a score of 21-13. to But, you know, before that Sweetwater game, no team had scored uh, more than 18 points on them all season long, and they put up some really, really good offensive numbers. So they basically blew out nearly everybody they played until they got to the second round of those playoffs. The 1992 uh, football team here at Rock was considered to be one of the best football teams uh, in the history of Rockwood football, and that says something. Uh, they had one of the most prolific offenses um, with Coach Mark Pemberton down here leading that triple option, and they had Coach Jim Gibson leading that defense, and man, that was uh, it was a combo. Uh, Jim Gibson, uh, they called him they called him Hoot. Uh, he was he was a really good uh, defensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, he made several different stops. He was the first football coach in the state of Tennessee to run the four three defense. Um, so you know he had his impact on the game and. Uh, still having a little bit of that still today. Yeah, uh, I knew him personally not very well, but I rented a house from him, or my family did, <laughs> back in, I think, the year 1999. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on from that. Oh, by the way, first off, that Sweetwater team that beat Rockwood that year, uh, they went to the third round of the playoff, and they got beat by Powell 13-7. to Wow. So, <laughs> I think that was the only team that scored more than 21 points on Rockwood. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you know, there was a heavyweight battle last night between West and Alcoa. The Tornadoes had a 14-7 advantage going into halftime, but West came roaring back, scoring on the opening possession of the second half to tie it at 14. Alcoa answered by returning a blocked field goal for a score, but they missed the extra point. It 
bonked off the upright there. West scored, and the extra point also hit off the upright, but it went in. So West held the 21-20 advantage, which was, in case you don't remember, last year's score, except the teams were reversed. Alcoa was not going to let that be the final again. A touchdown and a failed two-point conversion gave the team from Blount County a 26-21 lead. West got back into the end zone, completed the two-point try, and led 29-26. Alcoa marched it down the field and got in the red zone before throwing an interception in that end zone, and West ran the clock out to remain unbeaten. You have to go all the way back to 2014 to find a Tennessee team not named Maryville that has defeated Alcoa. We've been talking about whether or not to make West the favorite to win the state title. Uh, is there any doubt now? I think last night was a statement win by West and one of the best high school football games in, 20, in this 2022 season. Uh, West could be the best team in multiple surrounding states. They very well could. I'm talking like seven Division One football players. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that team is loaded. <laughs> Something that you said earlier in the season that was kind of funny when you said it, uh, but you were right. You oh. said West is just different. Yeah, I seen them on Huddle Film, and it just they stood out. Yeah. You know, it's dramatic. Uh, speaking of uh, some other bigger schools, Anderson County's got an opportunity to make another big statement this season when it plays host to Elizabethton tonight. Through two meetings last year, the Cyclones won both games by nearly an average of 30 points, including in the second round of the playoffs. AC's attempting to go to 6-0 and on the year, and there's a chance that Gavin No comes back tonight. What do you think happens there? I think there's going to be a lot of fireworks popping off at Anderson County tonight. I think Gavin No and Moog for AC will have a compliment game and they will win by 21 or more. Yeah, Moog is one of the leading rushers in all of East Tennessee, and he's the backup, guys. Yeah, I expect Moog to get mo more carries tonight over uh, him, but he, with him coming back is a huge positive movement for that offense there at Anderson County. Yeah, out towards Strawberry Plains, Carnes will head to Carter. Carter's quarterback Chandler Wilson leads the state in passing yards as before we go any further, let's pause for uh, a moment of silence and then our national anthem. Thank you. Now the playing of our national anthem by the Rockwood High School Marching Band. National anthem by the Rockwood High School Marching Band. And you saw the photo or you saw the video on your screen there, a flyover. And why that's interesting is that's a Rockwood Junior. <laughs> that is a Rockwood Junior. And his name is Ryan Woody. He went out and got his pilot license. And so he can do a flyover uh, for these games during that's the national awesome. anthem, which is really special. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it brings a different element to this uh, rivalry game here as a student flies an airplane over the football field. That is awesome. Uh, we we were talking earlier about how Carnes is going to Carter. Carter's quarterback, Chandler Wilson, leads the state in passing yards with 1,484. But you know the running back for Carnes, and that's Deshaun Bishop. Bishop's third in the state this season, but he led the state just last year. Needless to say, some capable offenses are going to take the field tonight. Carnes the favorite in that one. Do you agree? The way that Carnes can control the time of possession and play 
athletic enough in the backfield to slow down the passing game of Carter. I'm picking Carnes by 21. Okay, so Big. you do think that they should be the favorite for sure. I, I think Bishop's going to go off tonight. Yeah. All right. He went over 1,000 yards rushing last week, so we'll see uh, what he can do tonight. We're really excited for this one. We are at Civitan Field. We are in Rockwood, and it is Rockwood and Harriman, the oldest rivalry in Tennessee. We'll talk a little bit more about what's going on around the state, but also preview this game coming up. You're watching the OEB Law Game of the Week. Dig blind, buried utilities are everywhere. Always contact 811 before you dig to have your utilities marked. When your champions are always on the go, make sure their journey is safe and reliable. Ray Varner Ford and Clinton can drive you to the next level of performance in this new 2022 Ford Edge all-wheel drive titanium 47795. 2022 Ford Mustang GT Coupe 51795. 2022 F-150 4x4 Super Crew Power Boost 53810. Local you trust? Performance you can afford. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. I-75 exit 122 or shops online at RayVarnerFord.com. We are the Anderson County cheerleaders here at ORUD warming up for tonight's big game. Let's go Mavs! L-E-T-S-G-O, let's go Mavs! L-E-T-S-G-O, let's go Mavs! L-E-T-S-G-O, let's go Mavs! Let's go Big Blue! Come on, Mavs! Let's go, AC! ORUD has exciting new appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual energy bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. You can make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. ORUD is your affordable energy choice. On-site care now located in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. On-site care accepts most major insurance plans and offers affordable self-pay options as well. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at On-Site Care. Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances, because we care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together really again hey if i had automotive style suspension like the new simplicity plus a free floating mower deck for the best cut i'd be all that too well and if i had the expertise and advice of his simplicity dealer maybe he'd look forward to hanging out with me you don't have a simplicity dealership good point huh Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. 
The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Football is back. And OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. Welcome back into the OEB Law Game of the Week and the Elaine Walton of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Give Elaine a call, 619-6748 or 334-0070. She can take care of you if you're looking to buy or sell your home, all your mortgage needs, over five years of experience, over $20 million in sales. If you are in the area where you can watch this right now, well, I mean, unless you're streaming it online in a different state, uh, she could probably help you with your mortgage needs give her call at uh, 423-619-6748 or 334-0070 we were talking about cards and carter want to update you that game kicked off at seven right now it is carter the hornets on top of the beavers seven to nothing in the first quarter uh i don't believe that will hold but hey take it where you can get it that's a good sign for carter right now because i mean hey carnes is legit They've got some really good talent there with a really good uh, defensive backfield as well. So for them to pop up 7 to nothing already tells me their quarterback must be on fire. Well, last Thursday, Oakdale was fired up for an opportunity to take the lead in Region 2 single A. You would think the Coalfield Fire Department, which sits adjacent to Harlan Wall Stadium, had something to do with ex extinguishing that fire. But no, it was all Coalfield. The Yellow Jackets put up 68 points while allowing just eight in a dominant performance. Oakdale's got a great opportunity to bounce back, though. The Eagles are on the road to take on Oliver Springs, but the Bobcats will have some swagger after shutting out Greenback 21 to nothing in Week 5. How's this one shake out a few blocks from Tri-County Boulevard? Man, what a matchup right here. This is one game that I'll be paying extra attention to as this could be one of the best games all night. If Odell comes out of, or came out of that last game healthy, this could be a huge opportunity for Oakdale to finally knock off the Bobcats over spring. It very well could. Uh, one thing you will have to keep in mind, though, Cooney was thrown out of that game against Coalfield. So even if they are healthy, they will be without him tonight, and he's one of their better players. But still, I think Oakdale has a really good opportunity there. Coalfield, in the meantime, is taking on Gordonsville tonight. It's difficult to know exactly what the Tigers are capable of. 17 starters return from that 11-2 and two team of last season, but Steven Jackson is in his first year as head coach of the program. Could be a great one over in Smith County. Is this an important game for Coalfield? Oh, man, this is extremely important for that program, as this is a decent Gordonsville team who will challenge Coalfield in several different ways. So this will be a great opportunity for Coalfield to work on Coalfield, get quality reps against a quality opponent, as Coalfield has only been challenged once all year, uh, and that was by the Bulldogs of Warburg in game one. Uh, so the starters of Cofield have played a m very minimum reps in the second half of the ball game due to being up so much. So this could be a great game to see how Cofield responds in the second half of this matchup. So you see Rockwood running out onto the field. So let's go ahead and talk about that matchup tonight between Rockwood and Harriman. 101 years ago, Rockwood and Harriman met for the first time. It took seven tries before the Blue Devils finally notched a victory in 1926. Between 1937 and 1940, Harriman reeled off four straight wins against the Tigers. That was the last winning streak until 1952, when five straight went to the team in blue and white, which was also the longest streak for that team in the series history. Rockwood has been pretty dominant since then, though. Harriman did have some success prior to the turn of the new millennium. I can't help but feel like that doesn't matter, though. The kids know each other. They play hard. It's a rivalry, and pride is on the line. Tell us about it. You said it best. Well, this is a huge game, and these these kids have played each other so many times uh, that they know their opponent personally as they have spent many Saturdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at the same fields playing each other since they were kids. Bragging rights means everything in these cross-town rivalries. 
Harriman graduated a few key players, including Tadarius Boyd, Cam Clark, and Travis Frazier. A star wideout who's focusing on basketball, Jordan McCollum, transferred out in the offseason to Huntington Prep in West Virginia. There's still some very capable pieces, though, as Coach Travis Tapp will try to spread Rockwood out on offense and get the ball into the hands of playmakers. In Rockwood's three losses, the Tigers have given up an average of 29 points. In its wins, it's surrendered a total of 17. I'm not trying to be think Frank and Caliendo's version of John Madden here, but Harriman's going to have to score some points if it wants to win this football game, isn't it? Yes, they have got to score over 21 to beat this Rockwood football team. So they have got to move the ball to have some kind of success tonight. We know what Rockwood likes to do. Dakota Waldo Jolly has over 500 yards rushing on the season. Dryston Turner has over 250. If Rockwood is able to impose its will on the ground, it could be a long, short game for Harriman. How do you stop John Webb's offense? Yeah, I don't know if you've been watching college football, but look what Army and Air Force has been doing recently. You know, you don't do too much. you got to keep it simple, limit blitzing, and utilize defensive line movements to cause confusion up front between the center and the guards. Control the guards, which will allow your inside linebackers to flow more freely to the football. Line up properly, preach tackling, and do not allow formations, motions, and other deceptions of the offense to fool you. So you see the team captains are out on the field for the coin toss, and it's about that time of the Friday night when I ask you, what are the keys for both of these teams? Well, look, let's just be honest. Harriman has got to force turnovers, and they're going to have to win on special teams uh, to keep this ball game pretty close. Rockwood has to control the line of scrimmage, have limited penalties, and have success in the run game. If they do that, Rockwood will win this game. Both of these programs are two and three on the year. I don't think either program wants to be in that position, two or three, two of three, or two and three, rather. I'll get it right in a second. Uh, but this game doesn't matter, really. It's just for pride. Rockwood's in single, or Harriman's in single A, Rockwood's in double A. Doesn't matter. It's just for pride. They're not saying that. No. Yeah, it matters to them. <laughs> it matters to them for sure. Uh, you know, if you don't get this win tonight, you can still get your season under wraps. But, you know, a win tonight would be a positive move for motivation for either of these programs. Yeah, and Harriman's thirsty for a win right now. So uh, I think Rockwood's going to get Harriman's best effort tonight. And you see Harriman running out now. So the Blue Devils are making their way to their sidelines. And, man, I think we're about ready for this one. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the East Tennessee Properties, uh, or Lane Wall of East Tennessee.